It's time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode 72. What do you feed your mind is more than what you eat. The three levels of mental nutrition. What we feed our mind not only changes things in the moment, but it actually has the capacity to leave behind the vibrational footprint that actually creates threads of what the fabric of our brain and body are going to be made of. And that's reflected in how resilient we are. In today's episode, I'd like to discuss what provides proper nourishment for the mind to remain calm and yet alert in order to be vibrant and sharp. First, we need to consider the three levels of nutrition for the mind. I will start physical and move into the subtle since it makes it much easier to work with the physical. When we look at the first layer of nutrition for the mind, we have to really look at the physical food. That's the first level of nourishment for the mind itself because remember the body and mind are one. And it's because we take what we take in serves as a basis for our nervous system, the RNA, DNA, our cells, our blood. Everything relates to the food that we take in to nourish that. According to Ayurveda, as well as traditional Chinese medicine, it's slightly different with respect to the elements. You know, the five gross elements that we're talking about here have physical or in psychological profiles. But when we translate this into scientific terms, our body and our brain, because our body and brain are one, consist of trillions of cells, and those trillions of cells is the center of our awareness. And each of these cells has what we term its own intelligence. This cellular intelligence has the capacity to make choices on what is needed for the organism to sustain itself in good space. For example, glial cells of the brain, they choose fats to support themselves. And neuronal cells use amino acids to make neurotransmitters, along with B vitamins, folate, B12, B6, and they help perform the necessary transmissions. Remember, our brain is mostly fat, so the glial cells and, you know, the fat supports that for better transmission. This all takes place because of what we term in the yoga science field termed prana. And that's the flow of intelligence that allows the entire cascade from our, our unbeing to our actual physical manifestation. And that's how our organism operates. In the traditional Chinese medicine, prana is termed either qi or qi. And as I mentioned in previous podcasts, Cellular intelligence can lose its GPS system, which means it loses its way. And when it does that, disease sets in. You know, the elements, as I mentioned earlier, earth, I didn't mention them, but I said the elements, but what they are, are earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And each element represents a quality of energy and projects that energy within our mind. And I'll talk about that right now. Earth represents stability and it's responsible for physical embodiment and it creates our physical body by way of the tissues, the bones, the teeth, hair, flesh, even our fecal matter. And the more stable our physical structure is, the more stable our mind field can be. Because remember, the mind and body are one. The mind is just a reflection of how our body is and our body is a reflection or a crystallization of really what's going on in the mind. Water represents flow and cytoplasm. How well do we go with the flow of our energy? From a physical perspective, it's part of our cerebral spinal fluid, the secretory fluids, the digestive juices, as well as the fluid that surrounds our lungs and being part of our blood plasma, as well as our elements of secretion, including sweat and urine. So that's your water element. 
and fire. Fire is a third element we're going to talk about here. That represents transformation. And you remember I've talked before about feeding your fire. That doesn't mean become inflamed. It just means that internal fire because it does represent transformation. Keep in mind that fire is the only element that has to be maintained here. Key here is that fire govern, governs our will, our power of transforming our will into action. When we have low fire in our body, we're kind of lethargic. We don't want to move, more fatigued. We really don't want to have to do anything. We're not inspired to do things. And it's certainly the key to being able to keep the mind alert and focused. It's also the aspect of our digestive juices that transforms physical substances into nutrients for our body to absorb. Our enzymes in the gastrointestinal tract, liver, pancreas, all hold these essences of fire or heat. More subtle are the what we call uh, tagus, which are the more subtle aspect of fire, which transforms will into action that I mentioned earlier. That's what's so important about fire and our whole work with vitality, any of the work that I've done, the vital energy program, sexual radiance, uh, feeling good matters, all has the the core core foundation is the fire principle, that fire, that fire of transformation. How are we going to transform ourselves, our minds, our bodies, even our own life? So fire is very, very dear to me, and it's the basis of what sustains our life. Air represents lightness, and it's more subtle. It's a more subtle aspect of uh, in, in other words, you don't see it, but it has a more subtle aspect, and that's the pran, pran or prana, however you'd like to say it, or ki. It's that subtle energy, that life force that is uh, part air. It's carried through the air, through our breath. It isn't the breath and air itself, but it's carried through. Air carries our respiration as well as our circulation, and it governs all movement, and it's certainly responsible for many of the mental imbalances that we see in our lives. And the major sites uh, where we really see air are in the colon and lungs. However, it is the driving force for mental imbalance. So what does that say? We have to keep that air element nourished, keep it at bay. And if we're prone to being more of the air type, as we get older, by the way, air increases, and that's why we start to lose some of the fluid in our body and we start to become dry, and that's because air is uh, the drying principle, and it comes with age as we get older. If you have that as your constitution when you're younger, uh, you have more, you're more apt to have anxiety, you're more apt to be fidgety, nervous, worrying. Air is all responsible for that. Ether represents space, and the space between our synapses is in our brain, right? In order to develop, uh, or in order of development, it is this space that actually gives rise to air, and air is the movement to fire. Fire represents our consciousness and melts into water, and water condenses into crystals representing earth. So that's the Ayurvedic way that it's said. And uh, so a ether is our space. When we understand the elements, it helps us understand what governs our physical structure of the human body with what we call, they call it an Ayurveda doshas. But for this podcast, uh, I really just want to talk about our, our mind and, and how that really works, because really, what are we feeding our mind? So if we think about that, there's the physical aspect, think about the elements of how it's feeding our mind. Earth would be feeding more stability in the mind, right? And then we have water, more flow in the mind, fire, more transformative type of mind. We already said, I spent a little bit more time on that. Air is more of our movement in mind. And then ether is the space in which uh, things operate within our mind. You know, we need some more space, as we say. We detox our mind to create uh, more space. Keep in mind, though, that when we feed our body genetically modified organisms, we do create chaos in the information systems of these elements, and the result is disease, autoimmune disorders, cancer, etc. Not in all cases, and I'm not saying all GMOs are bad. I'm talking about GM genetically modified organisms that are not within the natural nature of the food chain itself. We have to be very careful of that in pesticides. So the first level is physical of what we feed our body. We know what that is and what we feed our mind. It's mind and body are one. It's the 
elements that we look at to really get a hold of the type of foods that we're going to choose. Then we have mental nutrition, and this area has been most fascinating to me. The level of nutrition for the mind comes from our sensory input. The colors, shapes, smells, and sounds around us are all the subtle elements that feed our mind. Our senses and our perception of our sensory stimuli actually affect the outer mind, or what we call manas, that's our thinking mind, as well, though, as our inner mind or our deep consciousness, which is more uh, chitta-based. And those that are taking the resilience course uh, or read Feeling Good Matters, I talk about that there. Our flow of intake starts when our sensory impressions and our percep and with our sensory impressions and our perception of them. It's how we perceive things that actually determines the colors and the shapes of what we're feeding our mind. These create our feelings and our thoughts, which gives rise to our emotions. It all works together here. By regulating who and what we take in will affect our emotional and mental impressions and thus our state of being because our, we're really thinking about our perceptions and what we train ourselves with meditation and we, the reason why we train with that is we learn to change our perception. We don't have to do that. It automatically happens when we start to step back, stop for a moment, observe and then detach and then activate the areas of our brain that we want to activate. Instead of filling this space, remember space, the ether element, we fill this space with so much stuff, like almost like debris. You've heard it said before, are we renting space to elements or people or associations that aren't paying us rent? How much do we carry around? And that's our mental nutrition. So the first was physical, second was mental, and now the third is our causal food. What do I mean by that? You know, since the food that we eat eventually gets deposited into our consciousness, we need to look at the qualities of food and how these food qualities translate into the foods that we feed our mind. And to simplify, you could think of them as the qualities. They're called gunas in Sanskrit because they're the impressions that food makes on us. And I'll just briefly give them to you here, but this is something what I call in my vital energy program, the nutritional energetics. And it really talks about the subtle qualities of food. You first have the first quality is the state of harmony, balance, joy, and intelligence. This is what we call sattva. And we eat foods with this quality because we want to be have serenity. Serenity comes from foods like this because it helps us increase our level of awareness, joyful, peace, peacefulness. It has the essence of that. So what are these foods that create this awareness, joyfulness, peaceful essence? Well, they're fresh foods for sure. They have a lot of juice. They're light. They're nourishing and sweet, and they include, I know people that are on the keto diet might say no, but they do include uh, things like whole grains and legumes, not genetically modified, not sprayed with chemicals, fresh fruits, vegetables that grow above ground in many cases, and dairy, but dairy from cows that are treated very well, and that's very hard to find. You know, the animal giving us the milk influences its vibratory quality. So if animals are not out to pasture, uh, you're going to have a difference. I just recently went, uh, I had to drive all the way to New Hampshire to get some raw milk when I'm living up in uh, Massachusetts. When I'm there, uh, the dairy that was here, they sold their cows. And then I went up to New Hampshire and, you know, at first when you have a change, you say, wow, I've been doing this for 10 or 15, 10 years, maybe 12 years. And I said, wow, the, it's over now. I don't have that option anymore. So I did some investigation and now I drive a little bit farther and I found a place, the fantastic dairy, uh, Brookfield, and it's up in New Hampshire where, and I spoke to the farmer and he just sounded like a fantastic human being also, and he feeds uh, grass-fed animals. And wow, I have to say, the milk actually had a different flavor. The cows seem a little bit happier, and it's actually reflected in the milk. It was amazing, and the milk feels a lot different. When, you know, when animals are not treated very well or given chemicals to stimulate milk production, which you find in conventional dairy farms, and we're not blaming farmers here, they're almost pressured to do that because of 
just all the restrictions that are put on them, the quality of milk from these cows is negatively affected. So I always tell people choose organic dairy products produced in a human fashion. In fact, try to go local on everything that you do because we really need to support our local farms. Topic for another day, but I was thinking about that this week when I tasted such great milk and I said, we have to really, so you spend an extra couple of dollars a week to really support these people that are working so hard to provide fresh, good food. They're the ones that need to be supported, not the ones that are falling into the, uh, they're not the mavericks, as I say. They're not the independent thinkers. They're not the ones that are inspired to really help change the world. They're just trying to survive. So we want to be different and something to think about. Then we have rajasic or rajas is the second quality. So the first one was sattva, the second is rajasic, rajas, and that's a state of action and a change in movement. You need rajas in life. It's energy that's uplifting, it's the vital, it's that vibrant, vital energy that's, that has movement to it. And the nature of rajas is attraction, longing, and attachment. Rajasic foods are bitter, sour, salty, pungent, hot, and dry. And they include fish, eggs, sweets, you know, fried bread, raw onions, garlic, tea, coffee, tobacco, any of the foods that create our sensuality, our sexuality, greed, jealousy, anger, fantasies, egotism, and delusion. They can create overstimulation, hyperactivity, and even insomnia. Okay, we drink coffee at night before you go to bed or at four o'clock. And, and forward, you have problems probably sleeping. But overuse leaves the palate unsatisfied. It fills the stomach, but it leaves the mouth hot and dry on many occasions. So does that mean don't include any of these foods? Absolutely not. It's just to be aware. Remember, always remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment, and pay attention to what you're eating, like a little bit of salt on food if you use uh, sea salt or mineral salt, is very good for stimulating appetite so that the food that you eat will process a little bit more, uh, you know, will be absorbed a little bit better. You have to be able to pay attention and use, use your mind, a clear mind, to be able to feel that and know when that's correct. But too much salt causes too much irritation and it even causes premature graying. So that's what we want to keep in mind. Then we have the third quality, which is tamas. Tamas, tamasic food is a final quality. It is a quality. It's the state of darkness, inertia, inactivity, but it's also material, material being in a materiality. And it's a hard word. It's a tongue twister to say, but tamasic is how we have material. It's the basis of solidity. And so it causes, though, in extremes, the carbohydrate stupor that we experience when we've eaten and then feel drained of energy and want to fall asleep. Tomasic foods are like heavy meats and foods that are spoiled, things that are chemically treated, processed, frozen, even refined food. And, you know, even canned foods that provide macro and micronutrients, they do lack the vibration that we need that you find in freshly prepared foods. So keep in mind, these foods produce lethargy, inertia, confusion, and fatigue. And more subtly, they're connected to on the mental level, because I'm talking about mental nutrition here, ignorance, addictive behavior, and abusive behavior, even that. So we have the three, and three qualities of nature even, and they're found in the food, and they're also found in our mind. They're all throughout nature. Keep that in mind. Sattvic, which is balanced, Rajasic, which is action, stimulating, and then tamasic, which is inert. It's the materialism that we have. It's, it's the solidity. However, you put some rajasic or rajas energy in the world, and it'll convert tamasic energy to sattvic energy. So we need to have all of those. We just need to keep them all at bay and in balance so that we have a focused and clear mind. And what does that give us? That gives us the resilience that we're looking for, that focus and clarity. You know, when I work with clients, the first thing we do is I always ask them, give me, I'd like to see what you're eating for the first three days. Many don't do that, so we don't work together because that's the first step because it really takes a long time 
not a long time, but an effort, I should say. It takes an effort to change diet. Diet is deeply ingrained in the mind field. And I believe I heard it said by Margaret Mead at one time, it's easier to change religion than diet. And with all the self-help gurus out there doing diet, everybody's following bits and pieces of what they hear. But if they really took into consideration the nutritional energetics of really what's going on on a subtle level, people would start to be able to overcome the mental, uh, the mental problems that are out there like anxiety, depression, grief, worry. All of that is depending on how we feed our mind. We work from food. We also work from learning how to practice in a meditative state to focus our mind so that we could move through those obstacles that actually come. It's very important to keep in mind, even when I speak to you and we're talking and we're having uh, questions that are coming in during the week, that even though I present something, it's not always the whole picture. I do my best to give you the whole picture, but there's only segments of the whole picture that are provided when, when it happens, I tell you, just so that you know it's a big picture. It's not always just just eat vegetarian, just eat ketogenic, just take this, just think that. We don't do that and because that's not really fair to the organism itself. Remember, everything is part of a whole and that's where the word healing comes from. It's the healing force, it's a wholesome force. It's the same root for holy, to be wholesome, holy and balanced and happy also. So that's very important. So keep in mind that we feed our mind, but we feed it on many different levels. And the three levels that I spoke about today go from the the grossest aspect, which is the physical food, to the more subtle, which is the mental aspect, the impressions, to the causal, which are the deep-seated consciousness that comes from the food we eat. And that brings me to the end of this episode. And keep in mind that the Susan Taylor podcast does come out every week. And it's available on SusanTaylor.org, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and other pod, uh, podcast platforms. And I'd love you to visit the SusanTaylor.org for more information and contact us with any questions, comments, and feedback. And you could also email your comments to feedback at SusanTaylor.org. We'd love to hear from you. And I'd like you to join our Healing Force Facebook group at SusanTaylor.org on Facebook. It's a closed group or open group, depending on if you're taking classes. Right now we have the resilience class going on, and I'll keep you posted on that with our podcast topics, because there's some exciting things coming up, and I'd like to be able to share some of those with you. And thank you for listening, and until next time, remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment.